fears of an immigrant invasion from Romania and Bulgaria have gripped the UK and Germany now that visa restrictions expired this year. The UK has cracked down on so-called welfare tourism. Germany is considering similar, but a UK think tank calls it fear-mongering. With the spring European Parliament election campaign heating up, a top UK Liberal Democrat accuses Conservatives of being in a bit of a panic. After all, European anti-immigrant parties have surged in the polls. How much is migration a threat or an opportunity for Europe? Hello, I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, hard talk with a matrix of newsmakers. Wired into this edition here at the European Parliament in Brussels, Minodora Clivetti, a Romanian member of Parliament's Employment and Social Affairs Committee and a member of the Socialists and Democrats, or S&D. Stuart Agnew, also here at the Parliament, a member of the UK Independence Party, or UKIP. He is on the Agriculture and Fisheries Committees and is a substitute on the Committee on Constitutional Affairs. And from London, Alex Glenny, Senior Research Fellow at the Institute for Public Policy Research. Thanks for all of you for joining us. Let me ask a first question to all of you, and starting with uh, Minodora. What are the chances of a wave of migration to richer countries now that these restrictions on Bulgarians and Romanians have expired? No chances at all because I insist in the fact that we have to, to use the correct term which is not migrant for the Romanian citizens or Bulgarians but uh, European citizens and they are mobile. They, do not, they are not emigrants. So uh, this is the first uh, thing I want to clarify. Okay, very good. Uh, uh, Stuart, uh, but whether, whether you call it migration or not, uh, are you worried about more migration movement to your country? I think it's very likely to happen because of what happened a few years ago when seven or eight Eastern European countries were given the privilege for their people to come to the British Isles. Uh, we were told only 13,000 a year would. In fact, three million have come, but it could be more than that. It isn't surprising because our minimum wage is well over six pounds an hour and we have a, a good benefit system. Okay, Alex, uh, what do you see on the ground at this point? Well, we haven't seen anything really yet. Nothing's going to show up in the numbers for a while. It's very difficult to make predictions of this kind. Romanians and Bulgarians have been able to work in the UK for the last seven years, so we're not going to see the same level of flows as, as with the previous uh, group of EU countries that joined in 2004. Okay, but then, but then how justified are these restrictions on social security that the UK government has enacted? How much of a danger is there of welfare tourism? Stuart, what do you think? Well, the key word here is parity. Anyone coming from the European Union to the United Kingdom has parity with our own citizens as far as benefits are concerned. If our government decides unilaterally to cut access to immigrants, they risk the wrath of the European Union. Okay. Nina Dora, what's your position on that? What do you think? In my opinion, what is happening now in England, it's an internal problem in an internal issue and there is no fair fear at all about an invasion. After all, you saw exactly, and I'm sorry I'm finished with that, at the uh, 1st of January this year, it was only one Romanian who came to the uh, United uh, Kingdom. Okay, Alex, Alex, do you think that uh, there has been an impact on cutting back on so-called welfare, welfare benefits? Is that having any impact on the movement of people? It's unlikely to. The problem is that not that many migrants are coming to the UK to uh, draw off the benefit system and they're unable to do so right away. Most are coming to, to work. Uh, so the new restrictions that have been introduced are very unlikely to, to do anything about migration flows. OK, with the, with the EU's supposed single market, though, shouldn't labor flow freely over borders, just as goods and services should? Uh, to you, Stuart. It's fine for that to happen if it can be controlled, if we know who is coming here, if we know about their health status so they don't carry infectious diseases, if we know about their criminal record, if we know that they're not bankrupts escaping creditors. Unfortunately, we have no idea who comes to our country from the European Union. Okay, well then, then Minodora, how, how do you take on populist perceptions that migration is spreading crime, dumping welfare cheats, on their countries. It's not correct. Uh, there are there are speeches that I, I must be uh, supported with data, and you you know exactly that the Prime Minister Cameron just decided to postpone an inquiry that he uh, started because of the lack of data. So Romanians go to the United Kingdom to work. They are not okay. <coughs> beggars. Alex, let, let me pitch it over to you because I we're aware of this study being shelved for the moment by the UK government. Do you see a lack of data? That, that would back up this argument about there are a bunch of welfare tourists out there. 
There's certainly a lack of data on benefit tourism. The government hasn't produced any evidence of this, uh, and they're very reluctant to publish this report into free movement. I think the more important question is to, to look at the impacts of this migration uh, on areas which do see large numbers of migrants coming in. It needs to be thinking about the social and economic impacts in those areas that, that do see new arrivals. Okay. There, there's the OECD... And has, there are other uh, organizations that have done studies like this that say that migrants boost a country's GDP and pay more taxes than they use in benefits. So why not promote more migration? Stuart? Well, I would agree with you and say really what I said last time. If you can control who comes in, if you can invite people you want, we want to have a point system in the United Kingdom Independence Party like Canada has, like Australia has, like New Zealand has. They only allow immigrants into those countries uh, from people they actually want. All right. Minadora, how do you counter that? We must think European, because at, uh, at the same time, one million of British citizens are working in uh, all over European Union, and uh, this is, they use their right of mobility also. So this is an opportunity for all of us. Okay, Alex, what, from what you've studied, do you see that, uh, that there, there, uh, this argument about benefit tourism isn't, isn't true, that it's actually the opposite? Many studies have shown the economic benefits of EU migration. It's true that they're more likely to be paying taxes and less likely to be drawing on the welfare system. I think the economic case is quite clear, but there's also the social case to be considered. Uh, and countries that do see large numbers of new arrivals do have to adapt um, and it's important to take this into consideration as well. This is what we found through our research. Okay. Um, here's shifting to the European Parliament. They just, they have approved a resolution calling on governments to respect the right of free movement. That has been approved by the Parliament. Can and should the EU get any tougher than that, Minadora? This is a very good signal, and I'm very, very pleased that this joint resolution was uh, voted by the uh, European Parliament, and that will help, uh, I'm sure, to, for the, the things uh, to, to be quiet and with uh, our uh, European citizens, all of them, I repeat, all of them, to find on the European Union a place to work and be good and feel good together. The European Parliament, though, doesn't really have the power over this, do they, Stuart? Well, the power has been vested in the Commission and in all the European institutions on this particular subject by the Maastricht Treaty, which said that doors must be thrown open to immigrants, in a rather, putting it rather crudely. We signed that treaty, and while that treaty is in force, we have to adhere to it, or we get thrown out of the European Union. You have no choice, right? Okay. Well, Alex, uh, what, about, what about integration? Do you have much information about how integration uh, is or should be uh, reinforced to integrate these uh, migrants uh, between EU countries? I think integration is something that's been quite overlooked when it comes to the EU case in the EU in the UK. Um, we focus a lot on migrants coming in from outside the EU uh, and focus on their integration, but more needs to be done to support the arrival of people coming from, from Europe. Minadora, do, do you think do you agree with that? Of course, there are uh, money, uh, European money, the Social European Fund, for, ins for instance, uh, uh, offers the possibility to all the member states to use money for integration, both of migrants and European citizens, okay. they are mobile. So there is help for that. Stuart, do you think more should be done for integration? Well, I would say that from where I live, which is the east of England, there isn't much integration at all. Uh, these various different... Um, nationalities from the European Union tend to live in their own communities. Uh, we don't help by having translators and interpreters to, to assist them, which means there is no incentive for them to learn our language. And if I can just quickly tell you the way they're able to get housing, in the, once you have a European Union couple in a house, they can in then invite others in, a lot of others. That causes huge resentment in my part of the world. Stuart, thanks very much. Thanks to all of you for joining us. I'd like to thank our guests, Minadora Clivetti, Stuart Agnew, and Alex Glenny. I'm Chris Burns, and until next time, thanks for connecting with The Network.